Inflation, student debt, recession, mortgage rates. Your employees have a lot on their minds. Offer them financial well-being support from Vanguard Well on Your Way at institutional.vanguard.com. All investing is subject to risk. Advice provided by Vanguard Advisors, Inc., a registered investment advisor. On today's Smart 7, 137 killed in Moscow terror attack, deadline day for Donald Trump and lots more. It's Monday, 25th of March. It's International Waffle Day and happy birthday, Elton John. The Smart 7. It's news, but not the news. Friday night brought terror to Moscow following a coordinated attack on the Crocus City Concert Hall shortly before a sold-out picnic concert was due to start. Four armed gunmen stormed the venue just after 8pm, firing indiscriminately before setting the building on fire. It's left almost 140 people dead and that same number injured, and it's the deadliest terrorist attack in Russia in 20 years. Over the weekend, flags flew at half-mast and many events were cancelled as Russian President Putin vowed to punish those responsible. Whoever they are, whoever guides them, we will identify and punish everyone who stands behind the terrorists who prepared this atrocity. Russia has repeatedly gone through difficult, sometimes unbearable trials, but has become even stronger. It will do so now. On Saturday, the Islamic State group claimed they were behind the attack, releasing graphic footage which has been verified by several news outlets. But Putin was quick to place the blame on Kyiv, claiming the attackers had tried to flee to Ukraine and were being helped out by contacts there. It follows a weekend of major Russian missile attacks across Ukraine, and Ukrainian President Zelensky says Putin's outburst was predictable. This absolutely miserable Putin, instead of attending to his own citizens of Russia, addressing him, remains silent for a day, thinking about how to link this with Ukraine. Everything is absolutely predictable. <laughs> After hinting that a general election could be on the cards for October, Chancellor Jeremy Hunt was doing the media rounds this weekend, talking all things manifesto. He appeared on The Laura Kay Show on Sunday, where he was quizzed about the pension triple lock. That's a policy which ensures publicly funded pensions rise by whichever is highest of the average wage increase, inflation or 2.5%. And it's good news for pensioners, as Hunt seems committed to safeguarding the policy. Will the triple lock be in the Tory manifesto this time round? Well, I can confirm it will be, yes. And that is an expensive commitment. And you can only make that commitment if you're confident that you're going to deliver the economic growth that's going to pay for it. But there was less brilliant pension news for so-called waspy women who say they're owed money after they weren't adequately informed of the change in state pension age. Hunt called the situation complicated, and the Labour Party also appeared to have pulled a 180 after pledging billions in compensation before the 2019 general election. Here's Labour Party chair Annelise Dodds explaining that the funds just aren't there anymore. Well, unfortunately, of course, Labour lost the last election, but also circumstances have changed radically as well. I think very few of us would have expected the mess, sadly, that Liz Truss made of our economy and that continues to be made under Conservative-led government. Sunday saw Israeli troops storm two more Gaza hospitals, killing at least one member of staff and leaving medical teams at both sites completely immobilised, according to the Canadian Red Cross. It comes as Israel cuts off food convoys from the UN's Palestinian refugee agency to northern Gaza, putting thousands at risk of famine. Meanwhile, ceasefire negotiations continued this weekend, although there's been little progress since the USA's failed draft UN resolution last week, and the Secretary General of Medicine Sans Frontier, Chris Lockyer, had sharp words for those supplying weapons to Israel. If you are enabling this conflict through finance, through the provision of weapons which are being used to kill and indiscriminately bombard civilians, you yourselves are complicit in this conflict. Donald Trump may have secured his third consecutive Republican presidential nomination, but he could be set to lose many of his assets, including his private estate and golf course. The former US president is due to miss his Monday deadline to arrange a $464 million bond after a New York state court found him guilty of civil fraud last month. If he fails to pay up, he risks having the state freeze his bank account and seize his assets, although this is likely to be a slow and arduous process. And while some of his supporters claim he's been unfairly targeted by the government, US Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez says this goes far beyond politics. Has there ever been a president, Republican or Democrat, that has been subject to this level of 
criminal charges. This is not about party. This is not about politics. This is about corruption and criminality. Still to come on the Smart 7. Sainz wins big in Melbourne and Paul Rudd talks Ghostbusters right after this. Ryan Reynolds here from Mint Mobile. With the price of just about everything going up during inflation, we thought we'd bring our prices down. So to help us, we brought in a reverse auctioneer, which is apparently a thing. Mint Mobile Unlimited Premium Wireless. How to get 30, 30, how to get 30, how to get 20, 20, 20, how to get 20, 20, how to get 15, 15, 15, 15, just 15 bucks a month? So Give it a try at mintmobile.com slash switch. $45 up front for three months plus taxes and fees. Promote for new customers for limited time. Unlimited more than 40 gigabytes per month. Slows. Full terms at mintmobile.com. Welcome back. It wasn't quite business as usual at this year's Melbourne Grand Prix after Max Verstappen's car almost caught fire on the fourth lap, causing the Red Bull driver to retire from his first F1 race in two years. Instead, Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc pulled off a 1-2 finish for Ferrari, with McLaren's Lando Norris rounding out the podium. Carlos Sainz, who's set to be replaced by Lewis Hamilton at Ferrari next year, was all smiles as he reflected on his third career win. I'm still jobless uh, for next year, so <laughs> that's uh, good for me, but... Uh... Jokes aside, uh, I know that when I'm given a good car, I can get it done. Proved it in Singapore, proved it here when I'm confident. And, and yeah, yeah, I'm just very happy with the car today. The Ghostbusters franchise grew one movie longer this weekend after the latest instalment, Frozen Empire, premiered on Friday. It sees three of the original Ghostbusters return to reprise their roles, as well as most of the cast of Afterlife, as they fight against a ghostly deity named Garaka, who wants to freeze the world to create his own Frozen Empire. Paul Rudd, who plays Gary Gruberson in the film, was on a bit of a press tour this weekend. He says the best part of filming was getting to drive the iconic Ecto-1 car. Drives like you would think it would drive, but to start it, it even seems like, oh yeah, this makes sense. Because normally you get in a car like that and there's a key and you turn it and it's on the driving mast and you turn it like, that doesn't exist. There's a thing down below, you have to pull, it's, it's like a lot of different parts. It's almost like you're driving the Millennium Falcon. There's less than two months to go until Doctor Who is back on our screens, and the trailer's just dropped. It sees Nkuti Gatwa officially take on the role of the 15th Doctor after making his debut in last year's 60th anniversary specials. He'll be joined by new companion Ruby Sunday, played by Millie Gibson, who jumped into the TARDIS to join the Doctor at the end of the Christmas special episode. The new series drops on BBC iPlayer at midnight on May 11th, so plan for a late night and make sure you don't miss out. Ruby, do you want to know my secret? I have the whole universe at my fingertips. And I'm all on my own. I'd love it if you came with me. Who are you? I'm the Doctor. You've been listening to The Smart 7. We'll be back tomorrow at 7am. Hit that follow button and have a great day. Give us seven minutes and we'll give you the world. ACAST powers the world's best podcasts. Here's a show that we recommend. Hey friends, I'm Sharon McMahon, longtime government and law teacher. And on my podcast, here's where it gets interesting. I dive deeply into the stories you haven't heard about America's greatest thinkers and figureheads. I also interview many of today's leading cultural experts like Adam Grant, Ken Burns, and Patrick Redden Keefe, who share their insights challenge us to think in new and innovative ways. So follow Here's Where It Gets Interesting on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Acast helps creators launch, grow, and monetize their podcasts everywhere. Acast.com.